What is a DDoS attack? In this video, we're diving deep into the dark side of the internet to uncover the secrets of distributed denial of service attacks, more commonly known as DDoS attacks. These attacks have the power to disrupt businesses, cripple online services, and even impact the lives of everyday internet users. DDoS attacks have become a weapon of choice for cybercriminals and hacktivists. But what exactly are DDoS attacks? Ever wondered how they work? DDoS attacks, or distributed denial of service attacks, are malicious attempts to disrupt the normal functioning of a network, service, or website by overwhelming it with a flood of internet traffic. These attacks involve multiple compromised computers, often forming a botnet, which are used to generate the excessive traffic and launch the attack. Now, let's differentiate DDoS attacks from regular DOS attacks. DOS stands for Denial of Service, and it refers to attacks that aim to make a target system or network unavailable to its intended users. Both DDoS and DOS attacks share the same goal of causing disruption, but they differ in the way they are executed. In a regular DOS attack, a single source or a small number of sources are used to flood the target system with traffic or exploit vulnerabilities, rendering it inaccessible. DOS attacks are typically carried out from a single device or network connection, making them more straightforward to trace back to the attacker. On the other hand, DDoS attacks take the concept of DOS attacks to a larger scale involving multiple sources, from thousands to millions of compromised devices, distributed across various locations. These devices are coordinated by the attacker using malware or botnets, forming a collective force to overwhelm the target. By leveraging this distributed network of compromised devices, DDoS attacks can generate an immense volume of traffic, making them powerful and challenging to defend against. The distributed nature of DDoS attacks makes it difficult to identify the true source of the attack, as the traffic comes from various locations and IP addresses. Additionally, DDoS attacks can employ different attack vectors simultaneously, targeting various layers of the network infrastructure or exploiting specific application vulnerabilities. This complexity adds another layer of sophistication to DDoS attacks. Both DOS and DDoS attacks aim to disrupt the availability of target systems, but DDoS attacks involve multiple sources and coordinated efforts, making them hard to trace, and challenging to mitigate. Types of DDoS attacks being utilized We will discuss three types of attacks. First, volumetric attacks. Secondly, TCP state exhaustion attacks. The final attack covered is application layer attacks. First let's discuss volumetric attacks. Volumetric attacks focus on overwhelming a target's network bandwidth by flooding it with a massive volume of traffic. The goal is to consume all available network resources, rendering the target unable to handle legitimate requests. These attacks often utilize botnets consisting of numerous compromised devices to generate a high volume of traffic. Examples of volumetric attacks include UDP floods, ICMP floods, and DNS amplification attacks. Volumetric Attack 1, UDP floods. Employing UDP floods, attackers send a large number of UDP packets to a target, flooding its network. Since UDP does not require a connection handshake, this type of attack can be highly effective in saturating a target's network resources. Volumetric Attack 2, ICMP Floods Using ICMP floods, attackers use Internet Control Message Protocol packets, often spoofing the source IP addresses, to send a flood of requests to the target. This flood of ICMP traffic can quickly overwhelm the target's network infrastructure. 
Volumetric Attack 3. DNS Amplification Attacks. Attackers exploit vulnerabilities in DNS by sending small requests as spoofed sources, causing the servers to respond with significantly larger responses. This amplification effect allows attackers to generate a massive volume of traffic towards the target. Secondly, let's discuss the TCP state exhaustion attack. TCP state exhaustion attacks target the inspection capabilities of firewalls, load balancers, or application servers by exploiting weaknesses in TCP's connection establishment process. These attacks aim to consume server resources and prevent new connections from being established, disrupting the target's ability to serve legitimate users. Some examples of TCP state exhaustion attacks include SYN floods and TCP ACK floods. With SYN floods, attackers flood a target with a large number of TCP SYN packets, overwhelming the target's resources by forcing it to allocate resources for half-open connections. This can exhaust the server's connection table capacity and prevent legitimate users from establishing connections. With TCP ACK floods, attackers sent a flood of TCP ACK packets, overwhelming the target's resources by consuming server processing power and exhausting its ability to handle legitimate traffic. Lastly, let's discuss application layer attacks. Application layer attacks, also known as layer 7 attacks, target specific applications or services, aiming to exhaust their resources or exploit vulnerabilities at the application layer. These attacks are more sophisticated and can be challenging to detect since they mimic legitimate behavior. Examples of application layer attacks include HTTP floods, SYN floods, and slow loris attacks. With HTTP floods, attackers flood a target's web server with a high volume of HTTP requests, overwhelming the server's resources and making it unresponsive to legitimate users. SYN floods on application layer, unlike the TCP SYN flood mentioned earlier, this variant operates at the application layer. Attackers send a high rate of incomplete HTTP GET requests, consuming server resources and preventing the completion of legitimate requests. Using the slow loris attack, attackers send HTTP requests to a target's web server but send them slowly and keep the connections open for as long as possible. This technique exhausts the server's resources, as it has to allocate memory and processing power for each open connection, leading to a denial of service. How do we defend against DDoS attacks? Enterprises employ various defense strategies to protect themselves against DDoS attacks. Here are some common approaches. 1. Traffic monitoring and analysis. Companies use network monitoring technologies to monitor traffic. This helps in detecting abnormal traffic patterns and identifying DDoS attacks in real time. Analyzing network traffic can enable the timely implementation of countermeasures. 2. Rate limiting and traffic filtering. By implementing rate limiting techniques, enterprises can restrict the number of requests or connections from a single IP address or network range. This helps to mitigate the impact of an ongoing DDoS attack. Additionally, traffic filtering such as firewalls or intrusion prevention systems can be deployed to filter out malicious traffic. Third tool in the arsenal is load balancing and scalability. Utilizing load balancers and scalable infrastructure helps distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers. By distributing the load, enterprises can mitigate the impact of a DDoS attack by ensuring no single server or service becomes overwhelmed. This approach helps and prevents a single point of failure. 4. Content Delivery Networks Enterprises can also leverage content delivery networks to absorb and mitigate DDoS attacks. 
CDNs distribute website content across multiple servers located in different geographic regions. These servers can handle incoming requests and absorb the traffic, reducing the impact of an attack. 5. Cloud-based DDoS protection services. Many cloud service providers offer specialized DDoS protection services. These services utilize advanced traffic analysis and mitigation techniques. By leveraging the scalability and resources of cloud providers, enterprises can better withstand and mitigate large-scale DDoS attacks. 6. Intrusion Detection and Prevention Systems IDPS solutions can monitor network traffic and identify potential DDoS attacks in real-time. These systems employ various techniques, such as signature-based detection and anomaly detection, to identify malicious traffic patterns. Once an attack is detected, IDPS solutions can trigger automated responses or alert security teams for further investigation and mitigation. 7. Incident Response and DDoS Mitigation Plans Having a well-defined incident response plan specific to DDoS attacks is crucial. This plan outlines the steps to be taken when an attack is detected, including activating mitigation measures, engaging with DDoS protection service providers, and coordinating with internal teams. A clear and practiced mitigation plan ensures a swift response and minimizes the impact of an attack. Thank you for watching. Follow our channel for more security related videos. Remember to like and subscribe to support stuff about stuff.